Hello YouTube. Today I'm going to make a video and show you guys, as asked, um, exactly what my router looks like. And this is a DDWRT router. So today we're going to show you what's inside a DDWRT router. <clears throat> so, I forgot you can see what I can see. <laughs> so, today we're going to look at the router. Um, as I was asked by this guy, in one of my videos, I was asked, let's go to my inbox here, I was asked, yo bro, I was going to watch what I was hoping was going to be an overview of the software. I'm not interested in watching a video of you reading stuff from a screen. Show us the screen. Give us a demo. This is not going to hack it. You know what? He's completely right. So, let's give him his video. So, this is my router. If I go 192, because I stay out of the hacker subnet of 0.1 and 1.0, I use a special one, which I shouldn't probably be sharing with you all, but that's okay. So, because I'm using HTTPS, it comes up with this thing saying it's not secure. And, and the reason that is is because I've decided to use HTTPS to log in. And there's probably very little advantage of it, but I want to use it anyway. And there's very little advantage because I'm not using an SSL cert. So let's go in. As I was talking about, here's the setup. There's a setup assistant here that you can start. Unfortunately, though, I find it usually gives me an error. But you can't argue with free. Um, connection. So this would be your WAN connection. They have all these different things. Disable static IP, automatic configuration, PPOE, PP2. Uh, TP, L2, TP, heartbeat signal, all that stuff. I'm using an automatic configuration. I'm using a DHCP from my, and this is just for your WAN, from my ISP. It's just for your WAN. This is not for all the computers in your, in your network. And this is the name of the router. I just put Unix to throw people off. I, I, it's kind of an old thing I've been doing for a while. A few things ought, the wrong name so that they think it's a Unix-based router, um, and not a Linux one. So... And by the way, this is a, um, a router that I got for like 60 bucks, and it's now easily a $600 router. So just basic stuff, options to put the DNS that you want to use. This is open DNS I'm using, so that way nothing's going straight to Google and I get a fast DNS response time, and I'm not using my ISP's DNS, which I don't trust. So this is more secure uh, in terms of privacy. Uh, local DNS, this would be the domain controller that we all use. I want every computer to know that. And... Uh, the gateway is going to be itself. And also, because it's the gateway, secondary DNS is obviously going to be this router. Okay, and at the bottom, it has very nice save, apply changes, or apply settings, and, and cancel changes. DDNS. Yeah, so this is DIN DNS, uh, or sorry, it's DDNS, which is dynamic, um, dynamic DNS, which is domain name system. So it's the idea that your IP changes that's static it'll automatically update the DNS. And this is useful for things that I've used like DIN DNS. Uh, case in point, DIN DNS uses, for DIN DNS I used it as a service, uh, it does a few other services, but the main thing I used it for was the ability to have a dynamic IP on a web server. So if your IP is changing all the time, this is my external IP here, 184.66.29.103, um, it'll automatically update the uh, the name res the, the name register to where the actual IP of, of the server is installed. So it'll keep you up to date even though you have a dynamic IP. And there's other people who do this. Stone Edit, uh, FreeDNS.Afraid.org, um, but I'm not using that. So there's MAC address clone. Um, some ISPs will require you to register your MAC address. If you do not wish to re-register your MAC address, you can have the router clone the MAC address that is registered with your ISP. Sometimes that's needed with certain ISPs. Advanced routing, here's a uh, place that you'd want to set up subnets. Um, it's also a place where you might want to do some other uh, configurations. Uh, you can set up if you want to use uh, BGP, RIP2 router, OSL router. And these are for different protocols like that Cisco has and different stuff like that. But for what I'm doing, I'm using Gateway. Then we go over to networking. Uh, there's VLAN tagging, bridging, um, port setup. So you can set up, uh, I guess, this looks like... Um, the speed and different stuff like that that your WAN port is going to work on um, because TX is usually a, a, a measurement if I'm not mistaken for um, 
latency and stuff like that with networking. Ooh, multiple DHCP server. I need to do that next time because I was trying to do something. Okay, and an EOIP tunnel. And uh, Ethernet over IP is what that stands for. Okay, next we go on to wireless. Basic settings, super channel, wireless security, MAC filtering, WDS. Here we'd set up, you know, basic stuff. Uh, this is the SSID or service set identifier, extension channel, uh, lower wireless channel that I'm using. Uh, you might want to use an app. I use an app called Thing. You can download that for Android. It's F-I-N-G. It's also for iOS and probably for Windows Mobile. And it'll actually give you an ability to test what channel all your neighbors are using. So case in point, I'm in an apartment. And I wanted to know what channel everybody is not using. So that is why um, I am using channel 9. Most places, everybody automatically, depending on the router, uses channel 11 or channel 3 or something like that, uh, depending on what the router uses by default. So doing this, um, I put my router exactly where I see fit based on what all the other channels are using around me. Some people might be using channel 1, channel 2, and these are all different frequencies uh, in megahertz that uh, Wi-Fi uses. And when Wi-Fi came out, a bunch of these channels used to be used for amateur radio and now they're no longer. And by the way, if you don't know, Wi-Fi stands for Wireless Fidelity. Yes, Wireless Fidelity. Um, super Channel. No idea what this is. Please somebody comment and let me know. I could Google it, but I'm really not interested. Wireless Security. Uh, this would be what kind of thing you want to, what kind of security you want to use. I'm using obviously WPA Personal, uh, Wi-Fi Protected Access 2 with TKIP and AES. TKIP stands for, I forget, but AES is Advanced Encryption Standard. TKIP I think is, uh, uh, let's look it up, TKIP. So we're supposed to know that kind of stuff, you know. Temporal Key Integrity Protocol. And TKIP is a little bit more, um, the reason I'm not just using AES, which is more secure, I'm using TKIP and AES, is because some devices have problems with AES. So for that, you can use TKIP. And if I'm not mistaken, TKIP is basically uh, WEP, which is a um, Wi-Fi encrypted protocol. What does, oh man, I used to know all this stuff. WEP, well, Wired equivalency privacy, yeah, it's something weird. That's why I knew I didn't know it. Wired equivalent privacy. So basically, what TKIP does, um, it's good. I don't know web. Web's old. Uh, TKIP does web times three, basically, kind of like uh, triple desk does or something like that. It's basically, it's the same thing as web times three. So it'll use TKIP if needed. It's a little bit more, less secure, to be honest, uh, but I provide. I think it's better for some of my older devices. Mac filtering, yep, that would basically be for restricting certain Mac addresses or only having certain Mac addresses. Wireless distribution system, WDS system. Extra options, lazy WDS, WDS subnet, NAT, IP address, subnet mask. Services, service manager, DHCP client, you can set in different stuff like the Crest IP and the set vendor class, and you can also you can specify, like, say, if you wanted to use a domain, like I am using here. If I mouse over here, it says Graham.land. That is the I use a Windows domain at home because I'm a Windows Server guy, and I'm also pretty crazy about um, technology. And so you can also do DNS mask, IP over DNS tunneling, SES, AOS, easy setup, WPS button, um, SNMP, secure shell, system log, telnet, and WAN traffic counter. And if I didn't tell you guys. This also has the ability to theme it. Obviously, my favorite color is green, so I went with green. Uh, but you can have many different colors, and we'll show you that too. VPN, virtual private network, very useful if you want a game. Um, well, let's say your game's cracked, and your other buddy's using a cracked version. You can't use, you can't do, um, you can't play online together. So what you can do is you can actually do a LAN party, and you can simulate being on the same LAN by using a VPN. Just gonna check my time here, guys. 939. Okay. So you got some options there. USB, uh, because this router came with some USB options, uh, you could hook in an external USB drive and use this as a NAS, or you could also use it as an FTP server or something like that. Again, more NAS options and Samba also has uh, support for Samba, which is 
Linux file sharing basically. It also has, uh, sorry, Samba is Linux file sharing to Windows. So it's a way to communicate with Windows file shares. Um, Sputnik uh, Hotspot, you guys can check that out on your own. I'm not too sure what that is. SIP proxy, this would be for stuff to do with VoIP. Uh, SIP is often used in VoIP technology. SIP stands for Session Initiation Protocol. Security, firewall, VPN pass-through. Look at all the options for firewall. SPI firewall, which stands for Stateful Packet Inspection. Uh, filter proxies, filter cookies, filter Java applets, filter ActiveX. Block anonymous WAN requests, filter multicast, filter WAN NAT redirection, filter ident port 113, block WAN SNMP access, limit SSH access, limit Telnet access, limit PPTP server access, limit FTP server access, uh, war uh, connection war uh, warning notifier, log management, and what kind of logs you want to log. Do you want to lock dropped packets? Do you want to lock rejected packets? Or do you want to log accepted packets? Okay, incoming log, outgoing log, if you want to have a look at the log. But I don't have it turned on, so it's not actually working because I use something else to log stuff. I use uh, PFSense, which I'll probably do a video up to. So access policy, um, you might want to allow some PCs, the, you can add PCs here. Uh, you might want to give them certain times they can access the router and certain times they can't, or just totally deny certain PCs or allow certain PCs. Uh, block services, if you wanted to block certain different services like Battlefield, certain games, BitTorrent, you know, whatever. And you can also block uh, um, websites by URL or keyword. Let's say you wanted to type in porn in there, and then let's say you didn't want them to, you know, download stupid registry cleaners, you know. It's just different stuff like that. You could put that in. Obviously, I don't block porn. Figure out why. Um, <laughs> also, there's port forwarding, which is basically, I'm using this because I have a ticketing server. And you can basically specify this application on this source net, which would be the subnet, for this protocol, which I'm saying both. Uh, from this port to this port, I want anything that matches that port to come in on this IP address or this IP address and this IP address only. Port range forwarding. This would be if you wanted to forward a whole range of ports at a certain IP address or a bunch of IP addresses. Port triggering. Port triggering. So port triggering, I believe, is for internal. If you wanted to, um, let's go to help here, just because I'm pretty sure I know, but I want to make sure. Port triggering allows you to do port forwarding without setting a fixed PC. By setting port triggering rules, you can allow inbound traffic. Okay, so basically, you can, without using an IP address, certain applications and certain protocols, you can forward them back and forth. UPnP, Universal Plug and Play, allows applications to automatically configure port forwarding. Hmm. DMZ, this is a de demilitarized zone. This would be in a place that you would want, let's say port forwarding isn't working for you for a certain web application or service. Um, what you can do is you can actually enable that a whole computer, um, a whole computer is actually, a whole computer is actually going to be not protected by the firewall. And this might be um, useful in certain circumstances where you may, uh, you know, like I said, not be able to just use port forward and you might need complete and total demilitarization of this, this uh, server or service from the firewall. QoS, quality of service, basically TCP packet priority, things like that. Um, make sure that things are running well. Okay, going on to administration, this is a cool tab. And inside here, you can set router password, web access. Here you can see I've got HTTPS uh, checked. Incidentally, if you checked HTTP, you wouldn't see that this thing here, this little slash to HTTPS, and you wouldn't see the warning. Um, you could also do remote access, web GUI management, SSH, Telnet, uh, boot weight, um, cron. You can enable cron jobs. A cron is a cron job is basically uh, kind of like a daemon that you would run or something like that. It's Linux terminology for a service that's going to run constantly. Um, you can program your own things into there. 802.1x for a RAD server. 
uh, reset button. I think that's to turn off. I'm not sure. You can look up here, help, if you install this. Um, reset button would be, I think, basically, um, I'm not sure, but I think it would be to disable the reset button on your router. Let's say if you didn't want someone to physically reset it for you, um, maybe you would put it, in, you, maybe you'd switch that on if you, let's say, had the router in some place that didn't have the best physical security. Um, like some place that's public, you might want to put that on so nobody can flash it and you know hack it in broad daylight and if nobody notices you wouldn't know that your router's been hacked. IPv6 support, uh, different stuff for uh, congestion control, IP filtering settings, router GUI style. As I said, there's different uh, themes. I'll show you a few of them. Here's blue. Here's Brain Slayer, <laughs> which is pretty ugly. Um, there's Cayenne. That's pretty nice. And then there's, uh, oh, I forgot to tell you, you guys can also, oh, no, I haven't got there yet. Yes, I have. I, I did skip it. Um, oh, where did it go? Pardon me, guys, just a minute. Do, 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 do. I thought I saw it here. Oh, it is here. TCP congestion control. There's different options. Vegas, Westwood, Reno, and High Bluff. Those are congestion control methods for IP filter settings. I'm using Vegas because from what I've seen, it's the best. Uh, elegant. Green, which is what I've went with. Chromo. Orange. Red. Wicar. Ooh, that's ugly. It's like 1998 all over again. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of nice. The lettering's a little silly, but this is quite what I would use if clients needed to have access to this. Not that they ever would. And yellow. And I'm going to keep it in yellow for now because I don't care. Um, or it might go away when I click a button. Keep alive. It's basically just different settings. There you go. It did revert back. Scheduled reboots, different stuff to keep it up. So you could schedule a reboot if your router constantly was screwing up and you needed to constantly reboot reboot it. You could schedule a reboot. Um, commands. Now here's really a cool spot. Let me just check my time, guys. 17 minutes. Here's a spot where you can add a bunch of different things for, um, for instance, change port range for outgoing traffic, check network overflow. This gives me the ability to put uh, firewall rules in and startup scripts that allow me to have a little bit extra security. Um, this looks a little funny here. I need to redo that. But it tells basically that on Windows XP and Vista 7 that I'm using a checkpoint firewall uh, instead of using what I actually am. So it's a little bit more secure. Also you can set many different ones for different things. Um, wall is wake on LAN. You can set that up to wake up certain computers. Um, when they're accessed from the web. Factory defaults to set it to factory defaults. Uh, firmware upgrade and backup. So you can set a backup, which is not available in HTVS mode. So it's not going to show us. And you have a really nice status screen that shows you visual representation of everything. Uh, we click on to WAN, get some more information. Uh, LAN, more. Uh, more statistics, more metrics, more info. But a very nice system, and you can actually see it in real time update. So that's the way that you can take your crappy TP link router like mine is. Mine's a 1043 ND, and you can make it into a $600 router instantly. Okay? So I hope you liked my video. Uh, please let me know what you think. Subscribe for more, and thank you for watching.